Most troubled guest in Dr. Phil history. You dig me out of $211,000. You understand me, Soshi? But before we begin, we hope to see you stay until the end as you won't want to miss what we have to show in today's video. Also be sure to subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell to be notified of any future videos, and comment Dr. Phil to be entered into our $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. Aneska, appearing in a 2016 episode of Dr. Phil, 12-year-old Aneska and her parents were brought onto the show to discuss her, well, aggressive tendencies to put it mildly. At first glance, perhaps you wouldn't expect much of this adorable young girl. However, her family and the state of panic she's put them in make you believe otherwise. In a long list of psychotic acts, Aneska has chased siblings with knives, has aggressively choked her own sister, and enjoys setting fire to furniture and other objects. And on a more terrifying note, Aneska's parents claim she once killed the family's hamster with a flashlight, as well as harm a nest of baby birds found outside their home. Understandably, Aneska's parents have feared for the worst, believing their problems stemmed from a moment of head trauma after she had fallen off her tricycle at a young age. Aneska, on the other hand, claims it's the voices in her head which influence her to do these things. I don't know. Like, sometimes I hear whispers and I can't make out what they're saying. This is one terrifying case, even by Dr. Phil's standards. Zachary Davis. It's not often that we get a proper interview with a convicted murderer, let alone as one gruesomely detailed as this between Dr. Phil and Zachary Davis. For those unfamiliar, Davis was the one responsible for bludgeoning his mother to death with a sledgehammer in the summer of 2012. Did you kill your mother? Yeah. A story he'd tell in great detail on national television two months prior to his trial, for which he received a life sentence. It's easily one of Dr. Phil's most troubling interviews, as throughout, Davis recounts the night to Dr. Phil with emotionless eyes and a remorseless monotone voice. Crazy in love. Love can often be a cruel mistress, sometimes pitting two women against each other for the attention of a man. Well, too bad for guest Eileen and Sandy, as the love they shared for the same man, Chris, was unrequited. So you were engaged to Chris. He gave me this ring. We looked at wedding dresses. But in reality, Chris only wanted to stay in contact with Sandy for the benefit of shared parenthood, whereas Eileen was a simple fling as roommates with benefits after his and Sadie's divorce. And while the feeling of shared parenthood was mutual between Chris and Sadie... Did you ask her to marry you? Not that I can recall. Do you have trouble being unclear? I do sometimes. Eileen thought that there was more to their relationship. Yeah, she was the real jealous type. So, believing Sadie had gotten in the way of their bedtime arrangement, Aileen resorted to online stalking through the use of dozens of fake Facebook profiles to harass her and falsely call Child Protective Services on Sadie for abuse and neglectfulness. Come to find out on Dr. Phil, Aileen had a history harassing her ex-husband and several others in the same way. Crazy in love? Mm, probably just crazy. Lindsay Lohan's mother. It gets to be an issue when a single television interview solidifies the fact that you're the most out of control person in a family full of notorious addicts with long criminal histories. Organic, yes, I will be honest. Not in television speak, but just answer them honestly. Yeah. Quite frankly, we're shocked Dr. Phil lasted as long as he did in this interview with Diane Lohan. In a raw comparison to her daughter, Lindsay, who could say which one is the more sophisticated of the bunch? Lindsay, definitely Lindsay. Our host is no fool and has no hesitation in calling Diane out for her stupidity on television, especially when she's so clearly deflecting literally everything Dr. Phil is saying. That's a well, normal you see that situation. Red light over there? This guy, Got yeah, it. these guys that are aiming those at you. Oh. It's anyone's guess as to why she hasn't picked up a career in politics yet. At the end of it, we're just glad Dr. Phil refused her pathetic excuse for a fist bump. Like sugar mother, like sugar daughter. For some people, the lifelong American dream is still very attainable. It kind of just depends on the profession. In Riley's case, this 26-year-old is a self-proclaimed professional sugar baby whom will often accompany wealthy men, typically older, on dates, outings, social gatherings, or one-on-ones in exchange for money and or lavish gifts. Despite the stigma surrounding this career path, sugar babies are paid very high for their time, about $2,000 a day, according to Riley. This small fact alone was eventually what led this guest to adopt her own mother into the profession as well. As one openly recounted to Dr. Phil, when they're not being paid $500 an hour for a, um, 
What session? About having some guy lick your feet for money. Together, they'll strip topless and whip you for 30 minutes. It's an interesting concept that appeared to pay extraordinarily well. But seeing the two dolls relay their many adventures together is just troubling. Yeah, but if you're ever looking to do something so... copyright? Riley's even written up a list of sugar baby do's and don'ts for you to learn about. Burke Ramsey. For years, one of the greatest murder mysteries has been that of John Bennett Ramsey, whose death has remained unsolved since 1996. Any and all evidence from the case has come back inconclusive, with her brother, Burke Ramsey, at one point being the case's primary suspect, despite only being nine at the time. He joined Dr. Phil in 2016, finally breaking his 20-year silence on the matter to discuss the chilling morning the six-year-old pageant princess body was found. Although viewers found the segment to be unsettling, as Burke's demeanor and constant smiling led him to seem not only unreliable but guilty in nature. As a result of the social media storm that followed, harshly criticizing Burke for the interview, he has since said that he will never do another interview again. Dr. Phil was later left to pick up the pieces by defending Burke in another segment, saying people misinterpreted Burke's smile for anxiety and discomfort. Patricia, to fake any serious illness is an instant no, let alone for fame and money. She did not have cancer. My mom was trying to collect donations. Not everyone shares the same morals. However, as Patricia is a mother who would go around lying about battling brain cancer. How sad can you get? So when Patricia did actually have surgery done on her brain at one point, sorry, medical records showed it was done for a complete unrelated reason. Despite this, Patricia would make numerous appearances on local TV stations by falsely claiming to be battling stage three brain cancer in efforts of collecting possible donations. Want to hear something even more outrageous? Patricia's even made claims to have survived at least 17 strokes, have her face removed during the surgery, and lose 100 pounds in six days. I am a world champion deadlifter. My first lift was 225, my second lift was 240, and my third lift was 250. In the end, all these lies were told simply to scam people out of a few bucks through the use of several fundraisers. Scum, pure scum. I have your the description of the procedure, uh, they did not use rods. But it gets even worse after you realize Patricia didn't even use the stolen money to improve her lifestyle. Her home was still in shambles and had left her younger son and pets uncared for. Dennis, the dating menace. Said the 3000 to send to Kim. I can't read, I don't have my glasses. 20 or so years ago, would you have believed that you'd be able to video chat with someone from across the world from the palm of your hand? Well now, for a lot of us, it's just an average day. You can game, upload digital content 24 seven, and even meet with the love of your life online. Well, most of the time. Dennis was a man just like anyone else, hoping to one day find true love. It just so happened to be a woman from Amsterdam called Kimberly Escobar, supposedly. In as little as a year, Dennis sent his fiance large sums of money on separate occasions in hopes of having her and her daughter live in the US with him. We quickly learn, however, that these expenses totaled out to be more than $211,000. Reasons for sending money include robberies, travel costs, legal fees, cost of hotels, and four counts of bail money, including a mother-daughter jail. You know, it's guests like these that make Dr. Phil so fascinating. And then she's jailed by immigration for 18 days. Correct. Tyler Perry's wife. We've seen a lot of outrageous claims be made on Dr. Phil, but it's weird that this isn't even the worst. For a little over three years, a woman by the name of Carla had been convinced that she was Tyler Perry's wife. But because it's Tyler Perry, and I know that I have been one to come into his life and change him. But really she wasn't. According to Miss Perry, their interactions first began when he messaged her from his official Facebook and hit it off rather well, eventually prompting Tyler to propose to Carla via Facebook Messenger. This was quickly followed up, of course, with a request to send cash over to support a few of Tyler's various charities. Wow, there's a lot of air quotations being used right now. Eventually, Carla's daughters grew suspicious when her mother was suddenly left flat broke after sending close to $100,000 to Tyler. Although she's still dead set on the relationship, along the way, even Carla truly believed she was the mother of Perry's real son. You know, despite never actually meeting either one of them. You can't make this stuff up, or can you?
Tyler Perry. He just he, Which he is just, just nothing exotic. He's, he's just a nice guy. He's just no, a good, down-to-earth, no, nice guy. Back. And with that said, that concludes who are some of the most troubled guests to appear on Dr. Phil. Feel free to comment down below what you thought about today's video, and maybe leave a like if you've enjoyed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to see more film-focused videos similar to this one in the near future. And have yourself an excellent day.